Hey yo guys, this post kind of makes me look like a clown because I thought that the last post was going to be the last one for the end of the year, but they freaking sprung one on the December 30th. Like, bro, come on. I was like, oh man, this is the last patch and then uh, we get this one over here, but that's all good. That's all good. And it's been a while since I've posted. I'm sorry, guys. I actually had a really nasty Christmas present. My girlfriend's cat plays with his water fountain and so water got all over the kitchen floor and I slipped and then I have a uh, I have a lot of injuries right now. Even right now, I am not fully functional, but like screw it, I've been wanting to make a video for ages, so let's just get into it. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the end of year festivities, the last freaking post, and the patch that's coming up. There are a lot of exciting things to get into, and so you guys already know the drill. Let's get into the content itself. And so to start off with, we have New Year's Hiyori here. Let me just do a quick evaluation on her, because not only is she cute but she's pretty decent i would say she is well if you're gonna ask should i roll for her or not if you like her yes if you're a meta slave possibly but if you are not competitive then it's a no old mate new year's hiori let's have a quick look at her skills and so let's quickly gauge what she does so for her union burst we've got hiori happy stamp inflicts physical damage but also physical defense down as well as a tp gain rate debuff so it's not tp gain rate for hiori it's making the boss or the unit that she is attacking they gain less tp and so you can kind of already imagine where you would apply this right where there are scenarios where you don't want the boss to be you being as much a similar kind of vibe to like your tamakis where they tp steal so the boss can't you be as often however that defense down is decent it's not the greatest but it's decent so you see 0 0.2 and then 0 0.2 so 20 percent scaling on skill level at level 114 or so that's probably going to be about 25 maybe not the greatest defense down but defense down is always good no matter in what form and so with that being said let's move on to skill one so with skill one this is where the real juicy stuff happens because she not only gives herself a physical attack buff she also gives the physical attack buff to all allies who use physical attacks and my god did i just say physical attack a lot but let's have a look at the scaling it's nine times for herself and it is six times for her allies so i don't think this is the first time that we're having one of these buffs but like as we move forward into the future a lot of these different uh specific buffs are actually going to start coming up and if i remember correctly these buffs these more niche buffs are actually a little bit better than the generic ones kind of similar to how heal over time will heal more over a direct heal. So yeah, physical attacks, there's going to be the M attack buffs for the M attack users. But to be honest, that is a really straightforward skill. And so let's move on to the skill two, which is just simply inflicting physical damage to the frontmost enemy. And so as you can see, it is a pretty straightforward kit. She is a pretty straightforward character. And with all of those different skill sets combined, you can probably imagine she is going to be a clan battle character. She is good, but she is not like like fantastic fantastic in terms of uh you need the jun like the makoto sama tamaki is really really strong right now christina kari hyori yui like these are all fantastic characters and when we have such a good physical roster new year's yui is a little bit harder to fit in sorry new year's hiyori because clearly i have not gotten over the trauma of my new year's yui spark anyway moving on so hopefully that wraps up the new year's hiyori for you i don't know how many times i actually said new year's yui because oh my it's just really rolls off your tongue huh <laughs> but let's come back over to the post gen 5 to gen 18 that's about two weeks but it's gonna be a slow two weeks for that one over there and as always she is limited but she will come back next year so don't fret about her let's move on to the next one three star guaranteed premium gacha uh i feel like i've seen this one before and so this is the same thing as last time so for a regular price of 1500 premium gems you can do a 10 pull and you'll be guaranteed a three star and so i don't think i mentioned this last time but the nice thing about this is that you actually can have a chance to get the new year's hiyori or whichever limited character is on the banner at that time and so if you are willing to give it a shot like the 1500 premium gem so fork out a little bit probably saving up from like your monthly passes this could be a nice chance at getting your new year's hiyori so if i remember correctly 2.5 percent chance for a three star and then 0.7 percent chance for the new year's hiyori and so therefore it'd be about like a 1.8 percent chance to get spooked so you're looking at about maybe be like a 30% hit rate. It's decent. It's not the worst thing. Honestly, it's pretty nice. And if it comes up to like a character that I want, I might consider doing it. However, generally speaking, it is kind of bait, especially for the older players. For the newer players, of course, this is actually 
great. But with that, I'm glad that these are coming into rotation because they're actually quite good. But for this time, because it's New Year's Hiyori, I don't think I'll be going for it. And so let's have a look at the next one, which is New Year's Fortune, the special login bonus. And so this is a little bit of a spicy one. It's not just a straight giveaway, although it kind of is. So during this event campaign, visit the shrine and draw your Omikuchi, a traditional New Year's themed fortune. And in a nutshell, we will be getting a whole bunch of rewards, including jewels, skip tickets, mana, and EXP pots. You already know what it is. So this event is going to go from Jan 1st over to Jan 12th. However, we can only add actually draw a maximum of seven times across seven different days. And so that means that you can only miss four days, but you guys are probably logging in daily anyway, so it's all good. All right, and so we are starting to get to the spicy bits. We are coming very, very close to the first anniversary. I need to be very, very clear about what's about to happen here because it's posts like these or events like these where people start to get really sour and stuff. Okay, guys, this is the first anniversary countdown login bonus. This is not the first anniversary bonus. This is the countdown leading up to the first anniversary. I still remember when I was playing games like Dragalia Lost or like some of those like Epic 7, some of the other games which had the countdown login bonus, a lot of people would be like, oh, man, this, this is it for the first anniversary? These rewards are trash, man. My mom gave me better rewards for like sucking. Yeah, so hopefully I was very, very clear about that. This is a countdown towards first anniversary. We're probably going to be getting a lot of other different things for the first anniversary itself. And so all up, we are going to be getting about 50 1500 jewels, I think 14 or 1500. So that's a nice tenor. We'll take that. All right. And so let's move down to Tower of Luna. I don't know if I'll uh, ever get used to that one, but Luna Tower, it's all good. So this time we are going up to the 170th floor with the EX mission as well. I believe last time we got to about 150. And so this one's nice. This guy is going to open up on the 5th of Jan and going up to the 10th of January. And that's nice because we are going to be able to get hearts. And this is a little bit embarrassing embarrassing because I was relying on some word of mouth, you know, some stuff in the community to tell you guys last time that clan battle was going to come on the 5th. Nope, it's going to be Luna Tower that is coming on the 5th of January. And so why that really matters is because we are going to be able to get an extra UE and a bit before this January clan battle, which starts on the 13th of January. To me, it's a good thing. These clan battles get exhausting, even in a more casual clan. For me, it's extra exhausting simply because I have to juggle so many gacha. But yeah, clan battle, it looks like this time we're going to be versing the torpedo fish. I can't remember what it's called, but this will be fun. And I don't think I've actually done any clan battle preps for a while. So let me see if I can pull something together. But if not, I'll just be leeching off somebody and be grateful to them as always. And so with that, just keep an eye out, but I'm not promising anything. And so to be honest, Luna Tower, as well as the clan battle like this one up here, the New Year's Yui is probably going to be quite pivotal. I'm pretty sure New Year's Yui like trivializes a lot of the Luna Tower mechanics from here on out, but but yeah, we'll see how that goes. And so after that, we have the game update. This is uh, quite nice, especially as always, since we're going to be getting new hard mode nodes. So for this update, we're going to be getting area 20 as well as chapter 10 and episodes five interlude. And for the hard modes themselves, we are going to be getting Lima, Yuki and Ninon. So I spoke about this, I think in my last video, Ninon is actually like her UE changes her quite drastically. However, it is at this point, like or really like a few months ago where you really needed to pick between clan battle versus arena. Some people try to be greedy like me. I'm trying to maintain both, but like, to be honest, I'm getting smashed because like my Monica, like my Makoto, I still have a lot of nine, six units in terms of gear. And that's just frankly not good enough anymore. Like in arena, I'm facing opponents that have 78K power and I'm still only at about like 71 to 73K. So yeah, it's really tough. But like back to the point at hand, Ninon, like her Ninon UE, it really actually changes the way that she matches up. Very much like the inclusion of UE for Rei. So if you remember, a massive reason as to why we didn't use Rei without her UE because like that 60 damage shred was, well, it, it really changed everything. For Ninon, it is going to be something very, very similar. So as you can see over here, when she defeats an enemy, she gets medium TP recovery. So this TP recovery is 150 per enemy, which is quite nice. However, when we go into the UE version, she gets 1000 per enemy defeated. 
And so what this means is that if she is actually able to kill somebody with this skill 1 plus, her UE skill, then she will instantly go into UB and her timeline, her attack pattern is going to drastically change. She probably will take out somebody a little bit earlier. Sometimes this means getting that earlier, that second or like that couple of seconds faster. And so if you are relying on things like PCRD fans and you do see a Ninon with the UE icon, you're going to have to be very, very wary of it. Like these guys over here, they all have the UE icons, although I think that's um that's kind of that's kind of whatever. But some of the other ones like these ones, right? Like you've got the Pekarin as well as the Nozomi. And we already know that Pekarin really, really came into meta with her UE as well. So yeah, Ninon is going to be one of these characters just keep an eye out. All right, and so after that, we're going to be getting a three level increase to the our cap. But aside from that, all of the juicy stuff is about to come. Grotto quest times two, literally nothing to say about it. But this guy over here, oh my god. Okay, the normal quest drops times three. Man, I've been freaking going six times, at least six times refreshes for all of the N2s. But if we're getting N3 for, oh my god, we're getting it for 10 days, that's pretty freaking good. Okay, this might be the point where I can catch up. I might go six times. I might go a little bit more, but like if it's going for 10 days, maybe six times is going to be enough. I don't know. We'll see. Normally I am super, super hyped for the hard mode, but these, oh my God, these equipments, they are the bane of my existence. And so this time for me personally, I am getting the chapstick and the knee pads out for this normal quest times three. And so if you are in a similar situation for me, get freaking hyped because we are finally going to be able to catch up. But otherwise that's going to bring us to the end of the update. Let's see if we have missed anything. So we've got the New Year's Hiyori. We've got the three-star guaranteed premium gacha for the New Year's Hiyori. We've got the Fortune Login event, which I think is going to be RNG. And then the first anniversary countdown, which will equate to about 1,500 pulls. After that, we've got Tower of Luna, in which New Year's Yui is probably going to be pivotal, but not as pivotal as Christina. You guys already know it. Christina is the queen. She is going to be the queen for so, so long. And so after that, we've got the clan battle coming up, in which I was wrong. Again, I apologize for that... Um, misinformation let's put it that way but the data said something different ah it doesn't matter i still gave out misinformation i am i'm still sorry for that all right and so after that we've got the content update oh that's something i didn't talk about the equipment cap update from 12.3 up to 12.4 and so honestly like this is a really really great thing because i think i think it's at this point where our equipment starts to slow down quite a fair bit so if you guys remember like back in the day i think we went from like 12.3 up to 12.5 and then up to back to 12.3 or whatever something like that right i think I think it's at about this point or maybe even the last patch where we just get like the one equipment increment and so oh my god thank thank buddha okay aside from that we have the guild house updates we got new limited furniture wait i did not see it maybe it's because they didn't showcase it but that's all good i always got to pick up the furniture and then we've got the grotto two times but then the glorious normal quest three times drop all right my dudes and so that covers this update in a nutshell hopefully that was kind of good hopefully there was some level of value in there with with my thoughts and a little bit of critical thinking. But otherwise, I want to leave you guys with a question that is a little bit bigger than this video. My guys, this is probably going to be my last pre-con video ever this year. And so what I do want to know is how you guys have felt about this game. We have been with this game for a whole freaking year, if not a little bit more. Are you guys still enjoying it? Are you guys enjoying the casual nature of it? How are you guys feeling about Crunchyroll as the publishers or potentially even side games in the back end? Me personally, I think this has been a very flawless run. There has been like virtually no censorship as well as a lot of generosity. And so I want to hear your thoughts about this game and how you're going. And so if you would be so kind as to dropping your thoughts down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. And I know I haven't been responding. I'm really, really sorry, but I guarantee you guys, I read every single comment. And if you do end up dropping a comment, I would really feel great about that. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please like the video. And if you would like to see more, then please hit the subscribe button. But otherwise, as you go, New Year's Hiyori once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.